What's up, Totem Pole Nation, and welcome back to another episode of the Recruiting Trail. Today, episode 42, we are getting back into the Virginia Tech Hokies. You see the sweatshirt, you know what team I'm riding with week in, week out. It's the Hokies, so shout out to Hokie Nation. If you want some gear to support the boys, TotemPoleNation.com is scrolling in the ticker below, as well as the Sideline Sports Network Hokies account. Give them a follow as well. Let's get into this episode. All of this data is coming from 24-7 sports. Virginia Tech currently has the 42nd ranked class nationally, 29th ranked class in the country based on average commit grade, 9th ranked class in the ACC, 4th in the ACC based on average commit grade. There's 16 commits, 4 of them being 4 stars, 12 3 stars. Um, We're going to start in the transfer portal with news on commitments there, starting with defensive linemen from Duke. D lineman Anias Peebles, 6'1, 286. Like I said, from Duke. He's originally from North Carolina. He was the 110th ranked player in the transfer portal as a whole. Over 1,200 players were in there. So, top 10%, pretty good. 12th ranked D lineman out of that whole group as well. According to Pro Football Focus, he was a first team all ACC player this year, which included 40 tackles, four sacks, two interceptions, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. He is going to be a one-year rental player for us at the D-line spot. Next up, offensive tackle, something we desperately need. Montavious Cunningham, 6'3", 305 from Georgia State. He's originally from Georgia. 250th ranked transfer, 15th ranked offensive tackle, and he is currently a redshirt sophomore, so we will definitely get some years out of him at that tackle spot. And rounding out, the three commitments we had in the transfer portal so far linebacker, Sam Brumfield. He's 5'11, 226 from middle Tennessee state, originally from Mississippi, 291st ranked transfer in the country, 15th ranked linebacker in the country that was in the portal. He's a redshirt junior. So we'll have him for probably two years, including that COVID year. Uh, He was Juco before he went to middle Tennessee. And then this year at middle Tennessee, he recorded 81 tackles, Six and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and a Middle Tennessee State team best eight QB hurries. Now, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you paid attention to the Virginia Tech season this year. And obviously, there's one more game to go against Tulane in the Military Bowl. The linebacker spot was definitely an area that we needed to improve. So getting a prototypical Mike linebacker to, you know, hold it down in the middle is definitely a step in the right direction. Now we're going to get into our top five commits in this class as a whole. Number one, no surprise to anybody. Like I said, if you've been following Virginia Tech at all this year, you know that Gabe Williams has been number one, the best recruit that we have in this class, and number two, the most vocal recruit. He has probably done more work as a recruiter than some of our coaches have. He's a four-star linebacker, 6'4", 185 from St. Vincent Pilati in Laurel, Maryland. He got bumped up recently to the 200th ranked player in the country, 18th best linebacker, and the seventh best player in Maryland. And like I said earlier, this is all coming from 24-7. I know on three has him as high as the second best player in Maryland. So take the rankings with a grain of salt. He's essentially a nickel linebacker, and he's dropped back to play free safety as well. So you know you can trust him when you're in nickel because he does have that experience playing DB for a lot of his high school career. He is definitely a great addition to a defense that we've seen play very well, but also have had its fair share of holes. Next up, four-star wide receiver, Keelan Adams, 6'1", 175 from Green Run High School in Virginia Beach, Virginia, 225th ranked player nationally. 37th best wide receiver and the fifth ranked player in the state of Virginia. He is also the all time receiving yards leader in Virginia football history. He has over 4,000 yards in his career. Huge pickup for an already stacked wide receiver room. We'll get more into that later. Right here is four star edge Gerard Johnson, 6'4, 235 from Frank Cox High School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. 454th ranked player nationally, 34th ranked edge and the seventh best player coming out of Virginia. He had seven other P4 offers, majority of them being in the ACC. So take that as you will, but this is a four-star edge that we are adding to, like I said, a defense that had its fair share of hold. The number four commit we have in this class 
is a guy that shot up in the recruiting boards pretty recently. Four-star safety Quentin Reddish, 6'3", 185 from Independence High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. He's the 463rd ranked player nationally, 47th ranked safety, and the 14th player in the state of North Carolina. He had eight other P4 offers, and not just coming from the ACC here. ACC, Big 12, and the SEC wanted this guy. And like I mentioned, he shot up the recruiting boards this season after he was bumped up to a four-star. Originally, he didn't even have a national ranking. Now he's a top 500 player in the country. Rounding out our top five, another wide receiver to add to this stacked wide receiver room is a three-star Chance Wiggins, 6'3", 185 from King George High School in King George, Virginia. 542nd ranked player nationally, 76th wide receiver in the country, and the number 10 player in Virginia. Eight power four offers, ACC, Big 10, Big 12. That's where they were coming from. And then, you know, Max Preps doesn't have all of the stats uploaded. You know, it's it's different school to school. When it comes to King George High School, they had stats through 10 games. And through those 10 games, he had around 600 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns. So good season, at least through 10 games from him. He's going to be an addition after, I'm assuming, a redshirt year with a wide receiver room that's going to be pretty hard to get snaps in. Uh, we also had a JUCO commit originally from Virginia Beach, Virginia. D-lineman Kamari Copeland, 6'2", 285 from Iowa Western. He was the 12th ranked JUCO player nationally, the fifth best JUCO D-lineman, and the first ranked player that was originally from Virginia. That rounds out the commits. Now getting into depth chart notes. Obviously, we're losing a few D-linemen, a few very good D-linemen, leading with Powell, obviously, but we've emphasized that in the portal and in recruiting as well. We have added on the edge, on the D-line. And if you watched any Hokie games, you know that that D-line, especially in the middle, not as much on the edge, had some serious problems stopping the run. That's not just on D-line, that's also in the linebacker room. The linebacker room was probably softer than the D-line was when it comes to production this year. But we've added talent through the portal and recruiting, obviously getting the true Mike linebacker, Sam Brumfield from Middle Tennessee State. And then obviously our number one recruit, is who's already a fan favorite, like I already mentioned. Uh, he will definitely be a leader on this team for the foreseeable future. We're losing a few DBs, but there's talent stacked up behind them, plus adding through recruiting with Quentin Reddish. The DB room really isn't an area that I'm too worried about. Now, I will say that we played some... This is just me not being a homer here. I'm going to add a little bit of truth to this. We didn't play a huge lineup of great quarterbacks. Obviously, you know, we played a few teams that their quarterback wasn't even at the quarterback position anymore after we played them. So that might have helped out the overall vibe of the DBs. But there's definitely talent behind uh, the starting group. So there's nothing really to argue with about there. The, this is not the group that really needs the emphasis on defense. but adding depth never hurts. Moving on to the offensive side of the ball, all of our wide receivers are returning, which is great. We only saw Ali in really one and a half games, maybe less than that. I don't even remember when he got hurt in that Purdue game. I think it might've been pretty early. So getting him back for a full season is huge. Getting Jalen Lane back for a full season without that ankle injury in the middle is big. And then obviously our big time receiver the big play guy in Daquan huge huge that's Felton that is massive massive returner uh for this wide receiver room as well as the studs we're adding as well as the studs we had in last year's class so wide receiver is definitely not an area of emphasis when it comes to what Virginia Tech needs to improve on now the running back room big big news with Bashal Tootin coming back next year that's huge um and Malachi Thomas behind him as well but Bryce Duke is in the portal. He had a very promising future, I believe, for the Hokies. And it's just a shame, you know, like that's a, there was a packed room, not a lot of touches to go around. So you have to understand why a player of his caliber is leaving. Running back Chance Black also entered the portal. He, as well as Bryce Duke, didn't see a lot of touches. He is a talented back and he will find a good place to go. Um, where he'll get the opportunity that he deserves being, you know, the talented guy that he is. Uh, moving on from running backs, the QB room is obviously in good hands. Kyron Drones, 
as soon as he entered the offense this year, I don't need to tell y'all. I know, I know that you guys know. Kyron Jones turned up this year. Huge difference between him and Grant Wells and just what it can do to unlock this offense, you know. When teams are putting seven, eight guys in the box against your quarterback, it opens up that pass game so much. And obviously that's pretty basic football stuff. If there's more guys in the middle, there's less on the outside. So I'm not explaining anything that y'all don't already know. But, it, you know, it can't be emphasized enough how much Kyron unlocked this off. And then behind Kyron is another guy that can move, Pop Watson. Pop Watson, fan favorite already. He got suspended earlier this year for missing curfew or something. He's 18. He'll figure it out. But I do think that, you know, post Kyron, Pop is going to be a guy that can lead this team. We're also adding Dobby Belfort to the team in this year's class as well. He's a quarterback that depending on the site you're using is either a three-star or a four-star, but I believe that he's also a pretty big fan favorite, and he hasn't even stepped foot on campus yet as a student. And then we I know this is a 2024 video, but the 2025 QB that we have out of Texas looks like a beast too, so it looks like QB is not a point of emphasis for Virginia Tech, which I know for me and I know for other Virginia Tech fans, that is a huge weight off of our shoulders. You never never want to have turmoil in the QB room like we've had essentially since I've been a student um, at Virginia Tech. Starting off, I mean, Ryan Willis came in, had one good game, and then stunk it up. And then Hendon comes in, and Fuente doesn't want to play him. And then Quincy comes in, and he doesn't want to play him either. Uh, and then we stick with Burmeister and all the – it just – it has been a rocky road at the quarterback spot for Virginia Tech. So having um, some consistency with Kyron and Pop behind him and then Davi coming in, it's just – it's th tides are turning in Blacksburg for sure. Uh, the O-line room doesn't have any players leaving that hurt the team more than they were hurting themselves this year. Obviously, it's not a hot take to say that our offensive line was not performing very well uh, in many games this year it started out we couldn't run the ball for shit now obviously we put Kyron in after that and things changed we were able to run the ball very well but to say that we weren't in massive need of a tackle and to say that we're not still in need of probably a guard as well I think would be a little naive we we really needed that tackle uh, pickup from Georgia State so I'm glad that we grabbed him and it should help out in the overall success of this offense running and passing next year. And then rounding out my, you know, evaluation of the Virginia Tech depth chart, the tight end room, obviously losing to Quan Wright. He was a great player. He also had some drops, but that's not saying that he's not a good tight end that we would have loved to stay at Virginia Tech. But I will also say to not get too worried about that because Gosnell got hurt pretty early. And I believe and I know I'm not alone in this, that he is more than capable of becoming as much of an impact player as his brother. So I think, you know, with years in front of him and then also depth behind him as well, uh, the, the tight end room isn't going to be a spot where week in, week out, we're like, damn, we really need, you know, another tight end to make this group really go. No, I think in an offense where, you are going to have your three receivers that are going to be your main guys. And that's Ali, that's Jalen, and that's obviously Felton. Um, Felton, the big play guy. Ali could be the big play guy. We never got to see it except for that massive game he had against ODU week one. And then Jalen Lane, same thing. He can break a play open very, very easily. We've seen him take a 10-yard post or whatever. We've seen him take that 70 yards, you know. So I'm not really worried about it. I am in full line season mode. I don't know if you guys are on Hokey Twitter or, but if you're watching this video, I would assume you are. It is a lying season in Blacksburg. All we're hearing on Twitter is, damn, we might not lose a game next year. Now, obviously it's called lying season for a reason. We know we're not going 12. and 9, All right. But let us have our fun for right now. All vibes are looking up in Blacksburg. And that is where I'm going to wrap this video up. Make sure to visit totempolenation.com to get some merch, support the boys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, all of that fun stuff. And to reiterate, make sure you hit Sideline Sports Network uh, Hokies Twitter page up. That is in the ticker right here below me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Everyone, please have a good night.